How many of you sense the Lord in the house right now? Do you? He is here. He is walking among you in this place right now. He is here. He is walking among you in this place right now. Come on and lift your hearts and hands Receive the anointing to For a very long time, God has been trying to get a generation to follow him wholeheartedly. And he's tried it through all kinds of vessels. And a lot have come. But you know, there was a revival in the secular world. And I watched musicians from the secular world for years and years, especially in the day I grew up. The 70s were very innovative years. They were innovative in every area, especially in music. It's not that it was just every generation thinks their music is the best sounding, but it was very innovative in the 70s. The Jesus movement had hit. And and God was trying to speak, and they didn't know why they, they played the way they played. They just didn't know why that was. But they did, and you hear iconic sounds. It was dropped down into a generation, and they would try to break out. Anything phenomenal is prophetic. There was only a, well, I can, I can count 15 voices in my head when I hear them. I can, but there was not many more than that that said, yeah. Anything phenomenal is prophetic. It cannot be phenomenal without the breath of God. Now it's hijacked a lot, but people tried to, you know, they, they tried to break out of it. You know, if I, if I, just, did, if I just did something like this, recognize the riffs yeah it was trying to break out it was trying to break out of the dirt and it's called that that one riff power of love oh yeah oh yeah there's others if I could just think of it uh, You know the riff? 
That is because that was a frequency and a tune God wrote to teach people to not live together without being married. That's all that was about, trying to get morality. So it was the dirt trying to break out, the spirit trying to break out of the dirt. And you would hear bands that would play and they would go into these prophetic riffs for 15 minutes long. And they didn't know why. They were hunting a sound. They were just hunting one. And they couldn't find it. So they would just play and play and play and play until they would try to find a sound. And they would come up with these iconic riffs. And you know them. The moment you hear them, you know them. Oh, yeah. All kinds of riffs, anything phenomenal. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not planning a lot of this, you know, just, I mean, that's, the Lord said to do that, I knew that, but, 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 but you know, if you did, uh, every, you know, you, you know, you, you hear all these riffs and you hear these things. You know what I mean? It was always a generation. And God was trying to break it out of the dirt. They was, he was trying, watch now, he was trying, how many of you heard what I said this morning about raising Adam up out of the dust? He's, the dirt, the dirt remembers. The dirt always remembers resurrection. Because if you heard this morning, you heard what I said about when God shadowed the man and raised him up out of the dust, the dirt always remembers. And every time the name Christ the anointed one and his anointing. Every time the name Christ is shouted, the earth braces itself for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, come on! Every time, every time you, you, you shout that word, every time you say Christ, the dirt braces itself. It's ready to manifest the sons of God because the dirt remembers. And every time anointed musicians would play, their dirt would remember. And it would try to, rem to move them into a place where resurrection could happen. And it did with some of them, you know. Uh, maybe like a... You know, and it would remember. And the Lord woke up Carrie Libgreen's dirt one day and wrote that song. It was to bring everyone, to bring them in to the kingdom. So don't let religion push you into a place. Because your dirt remembers. Oh, yeah, it does. And you can do it.
shift, gonna be a shift, gonna be a shift today. There's gonna be a shift, gonna be a shift, gonna be a shift today. Come on, so let's shift. Come on and shift. On and shift. Shift in the spirit today. Shift. Shift.
said, I'm going to slide into my, into my future. You see, when you were conceived, there was a spark of electricity that took place. Do you know what that was? That's God visiting your baby shower. And he brought gifts. Those gifts can lie dormant on the inside of someone for years. Sometimes when they're children and their spirits are tender to God, they'll flash out at times. But Paul said, when sin revived, I died. He said, I was alive to God once, but when sin revived, I died. And a lot of people, they operate in their gifts when they're just babies and children. But when they start making decisions for sin, then those gifts go into a place of dormancy where you can't find them. And it takes a prophetic word to wake up destiny on the inside of someone. Because prophecy is brought and prophetic words are brought from your tomorrows, not from your yesterdays. Yesterdays are only spoken of in prophecy especially in personal prophecies because you won't let go of them. And God has to remind you to let you know he saw that and he was there. Now turn it loose and move here. So in your destiny, one person used to say, it's the most profound thing I think I've, one of them I've ever heard. The prophet said, he has memories of the future. Stuck with me forever. Because you go into your tomorrow, you breathe in, you inhale destiny. You come back to your today and exhale into this time. And it becomes a pillar of cloud that you follow. Wake it up, wake it up, we're gonna wake it up, wake it up, wake it up, wake up destiny, we're gonna wake it up, come on shout it, wake it up, wake it up, oh destiny. Now let me ask you something, when you're asleep and someone's trying to wake you, Don't they sometimes shake you? Have you ever seen someone when the Holy Ghost comes on them? They shake. He's saying, wake up, destiny. Wake up, destiny. In 2019, April the 30th, I was standing on the 11th hour stage and the Lord said, there's coming a and I turned to Robin and I said, there's coming a sickness, a pestilence of some kind into the earth. It has just keep, yes, yeah, stay with me. It's coming. And I said, it's going to be international. And there will be unscrupulous men try to take advantage of this. I'm going to tell you something. Where I grew up in the South, we watched a lot of cowboy pictures. I know you may not know it, but that's what I am. I'm a cowboy. <laughs> you, just, you know, people don't, don't know that, I guess, until they see me put my hat on. And I had somebody, I had a horse trainer one time look at me and he said, man, you're a real cowboy, aren't you? <laughs> But in those pictures, when they got ready to rob a bank or a train, they took a mask and they put it around their face. 
And the Lord says this to me. He says, when they get ready to steal an election, they put a mask on everyone so that you can't see who's doing it. Oh, come on now. They're not counting on one thing and the world never does. And especially the wicked world, they never count on this. That God's people will pray. And destiny will awaken. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Can you hear it? Oh yeah. You're not going under, you're not going under, you're not going under at all. That's what we said. You're not going under, you're not going under. Speak Southern now. You're not going under at all. Can you say at all? At all. That's the way we would say it, where I come from. Say, I'm not going under, I'm not going under, I'm not going under at all. Here yeah, I'm going under, I'm not going under, I'm not going under at all. Going over, going over the top, I'm going over. Oh, come on now. You got to do it better than that. Going over. Shout at the top. Say, I'm not going under. I'm not going under. I'm not going under at all. Yeah, I'm not going under. I'm not going under. I'm not going under at all. I'm going over. Yeah. say this before we stop playing here you're blessed right <laughs> oh yeah now a lot of the outlaws got away with things because no one knew what they looked like because of the mask but the day came when someone caught their picture. And the whole nation recognized them. <laughs> well, guess what? God took their picture. Come on and give the Lord a big shout.